the word of god please look up everybody the word of god gives us an opportunity right to number one understand the character and the nature of god say after me the character of god and the nature of god so when you study scriptures right you you find in scripture instances that demonstrate the character and the nature of god hallelujah and then you also find the ways of god his methods and his principles so the word of god gives us the opportunity to know god listen the powerful thing about knowing a man hallelujah now i know god is great and you know we cannot fathom all of him the depth the height the length the breadth but do you realize that god wants us to come to a point where we know him hallelujah and the degree to which you know god uh, it will put you in a position where you can i'm careful to use my words now fairly predict him the strength of the knowledge of a man that you know is that you can predict the man hallelujah if you know me so well you can know that ah, i don't like goat meat for instance no in real life i'm not just preaching i don't like it hallelujah so if god is leading you to bring a goat for me here well hallelujah are you understanding me the degree to which you know someone is the degree to which you can fairly predict the person because you understand the nature and the character of that person and on account of that nature and character you can predict you can talk on behalf of the person are you following me now if i know sam so well when you ask me a question i will not need to go and ask him by reason of that knowledge i can know i understand his ways and his pattern of doing things are you following me now when you see certain manifestations you can know that no this is not sam are you following me now so the knowledge of god listen it's not just a vague pursuit into the realm of the spirit the knowledge of god is the knowledge of his nature and his character when you understand who god is the revelation of who he is and all that he represents alongside his ways and principles will let you know god so that someone can come and talk like god and act like god but out of the depth of your revelation of who god is you will know that this is not god hallelujah have you ever tried to call someone and mimic maybe the voice of the person's mother or wife or husband and the person just says no way you are not the one it's called knowledge there is a knowing are you following me now very powerful so scripture affords us the opportunity to know god hallelujah to understand the character to understand the nature as we explore the knowledge of the nature of god you see the way he dealt with the nation of israel you see the way he dealt with people in different dispensations and it can help you to arrive at certain conclusions and the name you give god is a derivative of the conclusions you have had based on his nature every name of god in the bible reveals his nature and his attributes one time we'll take a series on the names of god and you will understand that the names of god in scripture they are not just hebrew or greek names they are ladders into the knowledge of god god revealed himself in scripture progressively hallelujah they knew him as elohim they knew him as jehovah they knew him as adonai all of these names were progressions and it's a ladder into the knowledge of god because we have to know god constructively just like you build right and so scripture affords us the opportunity to know god so anytime you say i want to know god for many of us we don't even know what we are talking about we just feel emotional and we cry and say lord i want to know you we don't have an idea right now whenever you say lord i want to know you what you are saying is lord grant unto me by grace a revelation of your nature your character your attributes bring me to a point where i i have understanding of who you are hallelujah moses said 
that if I have found favor in your eyes, let me see your glory. And God responded by saying, my goodness, you, will, you cannot see. He said, I want to see your what? Glory, kabod, doxa. The weightiness of all that you are and all that you represent. And he told Moses, he said, the dimension of me that you are seeing on this mountain, I am revealing my goodness. The glory of God represents the entirety of all that he is. All that makes him God. So when you begin to explore the glory, you are exploring the knowledge of the nature of God. Hallelujah. In history, we study people, right? We take certain figures and we begin to dissect their lives. We study them. And you can study them so well that when you talk about them, it looks like you finish drinking tea with them. Knowledge. Hallelujah. And so God wants us to know Him. Because the strength of your walk with God is based or founded upon your knowledge of Him. The ancients were very confident. And they walked the earth with such confidence and power. We're going to be looking at a few scriptures. Because they knew God. I noticed that the progression of God as he dealt with the people of old. Is that he first revealed himself and then he sent them. Hallelujah. And they went with such confidence. Imagine the disciples. They had been with Jesus. They had seen him. They had they had seen his compassion, his power, his ability. And then he said, now, go to the Lordship of Israel. He said, take no bags. Do not take anything. And none of them asked any question. They didn't say, ah, God, what are you saying? Our doubt is a byproduct of the deficiency of the knowledge of God that our spirits are yet to come. For when we know him as he is, when we see him as he is, when the revelation of who he truly is downs upon our spirits, there will be no room for doubt again. That's why I named it faith in the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to start by exploring one scripture, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. We'll read it together. First Corinthians. I see the smoke of his presence all around this place. All around. There's a song that says, Consuming fire, sweet perfume, his awesome presence fills this room. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. I tell you, his presence is in this place. Hallelujah. Are you ready? First Corinthians 1, verse 9. Let's read together. One to read. Just the first three words. One to read. God is Again. God is he said God is faithful. That's what we are going to we'll explore that, that one first before we... God is faithful. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. He said, hey people, God is faithful. What does it mean for a man to be faithful? Hallelujah. It means that man is dependable. You see why we sang all the songs that we sang? Hallelujah. To be faithful means that you are dependable. You are reliable. Another word. Um, you really cannot use that word for God, but in a general sense, you are predictable. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Can someone read it from Amplified? A loud reader. I like the way Amplified puts it. Amplified. Hold on. Let's take it one by one. It said God is faithful. Alright. Reliable. Trustworthy. 
and therefore ever true to his promise hold on he said god is faithful reliable what does he mean reliable you can rely on him trustworthy he can be trusted he said and therefore on account of this attribute is ever true to his word god is faithful all right And he can be depended by him you were called into partnership companionship koinonia and participation with his son Jesus Christ let me explain this scripture to you listen the Bible says we have been called into what partnership participation with the Spirit are you following me now what does that mean we have been called to be partakers of his nature of his royalty of his dominion of everything that christ is and all that he represents the bible says christ is the express image of god and the bible says god has called us are you following me now but god knew that that statement would be too big for many believers to believe and he said before i say that god is faithful he was about to make a dangerous statement he said god it, it was enough it would have still made sense to just say god has called us are you following me now are, are you getting me why did he say god is faithful there is a little revelation there that if we neglect we will never understand the power of what paul was attempting to communicate. god is dependable god is reliable when he says a thing he means it he's not playing games with you he's not playing pranks he's not just trying to play hide and seek he said god is faithful hallelujah faithfulness is the attribute of god that many people do not know we know him as being the holy one we know him as being the righteous one but we do not know and let me tell you the foundation of true christian faith is hinged upon the revelation of the faithfulness of God can God be trusted can God be depended upon many of us look at our government and we say we don't trust this government again what does that mean they have failed you is that correct so can God the first question tonight is can God be trusted does he qualify to be trusted are you following me now does he qualify is there any litmus test is there any basis that we can use to judge and conclude that god is truly faithful hallelujah because when we know that god is faithful then we will esteem every word that comes from him are you seeing doubt is doubt is simply i'm telling you it's a byproduct of lack of the knowledge of the faithfulness of God. He called Abraham. He said, Abraham, come out. I hope you understand that Abraham was not the first to be called. The covenant was supposed to be with his father, Terah. And he missed it and died. And God called Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible says that God called Abraham. He said, Abraham, come out of your father's house every tribe every tongue and go to a land that i will show you hold on did he tell him the name of the land he said go to where a land not the land go to a land how can you ask a man to leave his house a matured man abraham was not a teenager are you following me now a matured man imagine abraham packing his things with all his servants abraham where are you going a land how intelligent does that sound we are examining the faithfulness of God so that we can build our faith upon that faithfulness and he told Abraham he said if you will obey me and can take me by my word this is what I will do to you I will bless you I will multiply you I will bless them that bless you I will curse them that curse you in this shall all the families of the earth Abraham was just listening to Hebrew and was just looking you mean God you will do this and he said follow me to where are you following me now and Abraham began to move 
without any knowledge of where he was going to hallelujah total dependence on God and the Bible makes us to understand that at a certain time he complained to God that he did not have a child and God told him that he was going to give him a son and that his the inhabitants that will come from him will be like the sons of the seashore when he shared it with his wife his wife said okay i've had you stupid man at this age of your life after suffering like this you are supposed to bring words of comfort you are now saying god is saying we'll carry our child paul said god is faithful are you following me now can i tell you something the faithfulness of every man is hinged upon his ability are you listening to me as as much as i love you come as much as i love you if i promise you that all through koinonia service i'll carry you today you see that i'm going to break that promise why because my word is not commensurate to my ability i may not have that strength are you following me now god weighs his ability and the vastness of all that he has and tells you that i have too much resources in me to validate no matter what challenge comes he said i am still god and i can fish out infinite ways to cause my word to be manifested in your life god is faithful do you know how many times listen to me do you know how many times god made a dangerous statement in the garden he said the seed of the woman shall what bruise the head of the serpent watch the drama that happens from genesis until the gospels do you know how many times satan almost intercepted the manifestation of the seed of the woman but the faithfulness of god backing that word ensured that jesus was born some people had to die for god to be faithful some people had to be relocated god moved beyond a man's spiritual life because he was faithful joseph wake up take this child and run away the Bible says God is faithful. Hallelujah. He ties his reputation to his faithfulness. And so there are certain things that when God does, is really not because of you. Do you understand? God is under obligation. It's not pride. There is no other God. So if he fails, who else will you trust? Do you understand? There is no other God. That's why I sang that song, Unchangeable God. He said, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son. If I look at you right now and I tell you tomorrow by 5 p.m., um, I will organize a little meeting for you, 20 people, and it will be a breakfast meeting. What happens? You must know me and unconsciously weigh my ability and calculate 20 people. If everybody is going to eat 500 naira, 20 times 5 is what? 500 times 10,000. You say, can this guy afford 10,000? When you weigh me, you say, truly, I believe. I follow me now. If I look at you and say, tomorrow by this time, you are going to enter a home tree. You say, hallelujah. Are you following me now? So, listen. I need you to understand that when God makes a statement about your life, He doesn't make the statement and runs back to His throne and checks if He has the resources to back what He's saying. Are you following me now? See, when the first creation, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, when the first creation went away, God had the ability to still speak everything back. Do you know something? God is so mighty. There is nothing called past. There is nothing called present. There is nothing called future. There is nothing called time in his presence. There is nothing called disadvantage. God can make a woman to give birth without a man. God can make a man to give birth without a woman. It's just that it's not necessary. Occasion has not created it. Are you listening to me? God can make stones. He say, if you will not praise me. I'm showing you the attributes of God. 
God is faithful, dependable. So, before God will make a statement, he will first look at himself and ask himself, can I defend what I'm about to speak? And God looks and says, Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. He said, you can take me for my word. Watch and see. And Abraham, it looked like nothing will happen. Suddenly, Isaac comes into the scene. And Abraham is humble. Sarah is humble. And everybody says, truly, God is faithful. And now God says, Abraham, let me see how much you trust me. Take now thy son. That son that came on account of my faithfulness. And offer him upon a mount that I will show you. A mount again. A mount again. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and carried Isaac. Why? Because his faith was hinged upon the faithfulness of God. The Bible shares his contemplations with us in the book of Romans chapter 4. How that Abraham believed that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead. He said, God, you are so faithful. I don't know what to tell my wife after I murder my child. But you are going to guide me as I explain to her. In any case, I will obey you. Are you following me now? And he took Isaac. And when God saw that Abraham could give Isaac, he said, Abraham, wait. Suddenly from nowhere, a ram was tied. The horn was inside, you know, it was just tied. The ram could not run anywhere. Where the ram came from, where the tree came from that tied him, this is a mystery that we ask God when we get to heaven. God is faithful. Hallelujah. The faithfulness of God. He swore unto Abraham and told him that his people will be in the land of captivity. And after a while, a period of 400 years, they will go out. Although it was delayed, God is faithful. Moses goes to Pharaoh and says, Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh laughs. The which God sent you now. We have so many. There's a God for son. There's one for children. There's one for our farm. There's one for fruitfulness. Which of them? And that's why Moses said, God, you better clarify. Who are you? I don't want to embarrass myself before Pharaoh. Who are you? And he said, I am that I am. Listen, he wasn't answering Moses yet. He said, I am. He said, Moses, it looks like you do not know me. I know there are many gods and it's easy to join me in all of those classes. But I give you a name that none of them have. I am. That I am. I am whatever you can conceive in your mind. Let your mind grow wild. It will still not stretch a glimpse of all that I can do. He said, Moses, on account of this revelation, I am. Go. So, when Moses threw his staff, Pharaoh laughed. That's a discouraging laugh. When you move to your enemy, it's supposed to be crying. When your enemy laughs, it will challenge your faith. Pharaoh said, ah, Wow, Moses. This has been our system. When he threw, if Moses did not know the faithfulness of God, the logical thing to do is to run away. Run back to the burning bush, but he laughed. I am is faithful. He can become something. There is still a method. There is a, in him, is a new dimension of wisdom that you have not seen. And God said, hold on, let me show you my faithfulness. Suddenly, a snake didn't expand, didn't increase in size, swallowed the other snakes and became a rod again. And Moses held it. I control matter and time. God is faithful. Are you following me now? We are examining, I want to challenge your faith. Because many of us have faith in God. But we do not know what attribute of God should be the foundation. Faith in what? The holiness of God? Or faith in the righteousness of God? So when we say we have faith in God, that's a vague, it's like saying I'm studying science. You must know which attribute of God your faith lies on. Hallelujah. And Pharaoh said, see, you don't know me. These people will not go. And God said, really? You are challenging my faithfulness. In other words, Pharaoh, so you want to prove that I am a liar. He said, this is a contest you want to try with me. All right, let's go ahead. And at a point, he understood the significance of the firstborn. 
and God struck all of the firstborns and Pharaoh said wow I give up I now know that there is one higher than me he said Moses pack all your people quick he said the Bible said they spoiled he said to show you I am faithful you will not just leave Egypt you will spoil the Egyptians these were people who would not even give them straw but now give them gold silver cattle and Pharaoh confessed he said please pray for me as you are going hallelujah now he left the people were happy they were all singing truly God is faithful suddenly Pharaoh said I his ego was tongue he said lie lie I'm following them and he saddled his chariots and was running and the faithful one I can imagine God looking from his throne and say man man when will you learn man Pharaoh you were a baby I was responsible for your development when have you started challenging my faithfulness and he said for this I will so show my faithfulness and the nation of Israel they were all afraid and Moses got to a place you see when you are leading people and you get to a crossroad ask God for direction the same people who were jumping now now met Moses and said Moses don't get us annoyed we were happy with our garlic and cucumber and all you have brought us to die and Moses said something in Exodus 14 he says stand still he said I may in myself I'm paraphrasing now not know what to do to you but God is faithful before us is a red sea I hope you understand that even if that red sea divides all you are going to see is, is a deep gully are you following me now so it's not like the water parted and then they saw ground like this the water was it was a red sea red means danger it was a red sea hallelujah and the faithful one who watches over his word to perform it was just watching and he told Moses when Moses went to him Moses quickly comforted the people and ran to God and said God now look at what you have brought me into and God said Moses see there is a dimension of faithfulness of God that when you have seen he becomes more strict in his dealings with you there are some things he expects from you on account of the knowledge of his faithfulness he said Moses you mean after all you have seen you are still coming to ask me questions ask the people to move forward how would you like to do that I'm sure Moses was not the strongest person in Israel yet. and even if he was leading two point something million people you better be careful they will crush you and disintegrate your bones and Moses comes to the people and says all nation of Israel hear ye the word of the Lord move now Bible history tells us the water did not part don't think the water just parted that's what many of us want the water parts and you say oh thou faithful one he said God asked me to tell you Bible history said they started literally they started walking into the water yes yes they walked and the water got to a point suddenly the Bible says Psalms that with the breath of his nostrils he said let me show you how faithful I am and the sea parted and the ground lifted and the sea became walls water standing hanging in space he said God is faithful the faithfulness of God when the, I wonder what was going through their minds when they were passing let's hurry up oh, before this thing comes down I mean how did it happen in the first place that's how God gives you a blessing and you are afraid of it because you think something bad will happen God is faithful oh he can be dependable am I blessing you tonight God is faithful and guess what? To make a caricature out of Pharaoh, they were on chariots. I follow me now. So logically, and these were the best of chariots. They ran. It was a long sea. So while the Israelites were going, the Egyptians were into the sea too. I follow me now. I'm sure everybody just looking at the sun and say, "Will you hurry up? I be this water will just cover us here." My friend, hurry up! Everybody driving their goats and their cattle and everything. And the Bible says the faithful one suddenly made the tires. Because the Bible said they were walking on dry ground. So there was no mud. Suddenly from nowhere, the one who holds matter and time and space started walking upon their tires. 
and they could not understand. And when Moses crossed, God told him, Oh, yeah, cover the sea. God is faithful. The revelation of the faithfulness of God will kill doubt forever. Are you following me now? You see why God got angry every time the nation of Israel doubted his words? Because he told them, he said, now, all of you are growing older. Make sure you gather the children and teach them this thing. Let them know all of these my attributes because there are still some miracles to be And there are still are you, more challenges to face. And they will need to Hallelujah. draw from the archives of what I have done. Then he said everything and the angel began. He said, make sure you ponder what them. kind That's of That's why every time God is. does a great thing, they build a and then he began to tell her how that she was going to conceive. Why are we doing she, she Why are we celebrating the house shall this thing? Why are we doing things that I do not know? Man. What happened? And the angel looked at her. He could understand with her truly he because there was a level of the Pharaoh knowledge of God she did not know. Is that correct? And so he took out time to explain to her. He said, This is the musician. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And then that child, that which will be conceived. By the time Moses died, but when Zechariah was now next, hallelujah, so God sent an angel and he came. Zechariah was a priest. He was a priest anointed to function. He had seen the faithfulness of God on many fronts. Are you following me now? And when the angel appeared to him and told him that his wife Elizabeth was going to be a son, Zechariah started asking all kinds of questions. And Gabriel said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. He said, this guy you are anointed. This your mouth is conflicting what God wants to do. And if we don't do something about it, you are going to corrupt the manifestation of John who will forerun the coming of Christ. Therefore, be deaf, be dumb. And that's what happened to him. Hallelujah. So that he would not interrupt the things that God was going to be doing. When John was born, the Bible says they asked him. They said, what is the name of the child? He wrote John. His mouth opened nobody prayed for him no hands were laid upon him the moment he confirmed that it's true i've been quiet for months better he's john open my mouth for me hallelujah i have learned something about god in my little life god is greatly encouraged with a man who can take him by his word that when God speaks to you the trouble is whenever God speaks to us the first thing is we begin to calculate mathematically how it will be done so God says I will bless you say ah Uncle Rav, Japan I will call you and you go and check his number you check your jota you insult everybody in your house till you find it later you are breathing and you just said Uncle Rav, good day is it day or night in Japan is that what God told you the Bible says I mean God God spoke to you that he would bless you you see, faith must not lean on any other auxiliary substance. Many of us want our faith to stand. You are standing, but let me wage it with something in case God does not set for me. It's because, we're, it's because we are not sure. Hallelujah. We are not sure. Have you ever tried to plan something? I say, let's do plan B. Because the way I'm perceiving this thing, we, we are not ready to be embarrassed. We are going to this restaurant. I sense in my spirit, two restaurants that we have seen, we usually eat, they are closed. This one may be closed. I follow me now. And so that lack of confidence, it brings doubt. But when you are absolutely sure, when you are absolutely sure, look at me. There is a paper in this Bible, two of us, just answer there's a paper in this bible true or false now the answer is it's impossible to say how true it is do you understand because it is left it is not except by discernment you cannot know whether you have never opened my bible to see it are you following me now let me try to find one paper okay i want you to get this concept can you see a paper Everybody, can you see a paper? Is there a paper in this Bible? Are you sure? What if you are lying? What if you are lying? 
what if from the time i was closing it wind pushed it and some scientific forces of nature just came and something happened you know radio waves just came things are happening these days what if there is nothing how many of you can pledge everything in your bank account to prove that there is a paper in this bible ah, i mentioned bank accounts some of you refuse have bad believers it's part of the story this is not real life now it's part of the explanation <laughs> hallelujah my dear please stand up is there a paper in this bible are you confident what should we do to you if we check again and we don't find it are you following me now many of you are laughing but you're not getting the point i'm trying to put are you seeing now the first time i asked you the question many of you are saying yes no yes no but there was something that suddenly happened to you that did what there was a revelation when i opened it and it brought a degree of confidence that nobody look at all of the points i started bringing are you following me now the reason why we doubt god and we doubt his ways is because there is a revelation of his faithfulness we are yet to comprehend this is why he left us the testament of the word that when we read through we will see god is saying did i fail anybody read i put my character to test check it from genesis to revelations do you not see that all those who trusted me smiled at the end the Bible says, who through faith in that faithfulness, men subdued the mouth of lions. Daniel, Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Elijah, all kinds of people. In the days of Hezekiah, the Bible makes us understand that the king set themselves to, I mean, they wrote a letter threatening Hezekiah. He took it to God and he cried. And the Bible says, God gave them a strategy. The same God told them he said this is going to be how it you will arrange the armies the worshipers will lead the way and then you will just sing and dance what kind of army is that if the nigerian soldiers with what is going on in this country suddenly so people with trumpet not guns trumpet there are, there are police people standing outside here imagine if you came in and started just holding trumpets and say we're going to have beautiful praise tonight but that's what happened the strategy of god and the Bible says suddenly enemies began to fight themselves. They killed these people and when they finished, they killed themselves. Yes, they had to kill themselves. Who killed the last person? Hallelujah. Are you following me now? Say after me, God is faithful. When a man throws his CV and says go through it, I give you the power to scrutinize me. If you find anything faulty with my nature, bring it to my notice. This is what God did. This is why everybody has access to a Bible. Are you following me now? He said there's nothing to hide. Go through it on your own. Beyond your man of God. And God gave other people wisdom to transcribe it into Greek and Hebrew and King James. He said use every English you can. Some Bibles are in your language now. Are you following me now? He says, so that you will have no excuse. I want the entire world to scrutinize my faithfulness. And if at any point anyone finds out that I was not faithful, let me know and I will cease to be God. Hallelujah. And so Paul is speaking to the people and he says, guys, I'm about to give you a revelation. But like many other patriarchs of old, when God talks like this, they don't understand. So he said, God is faithful. So whatever I'm about to tell you, you should know that God is not playing about it. He said, God is faithful by who you were called into fellowship, participation, oneness. That means he called you into his victory. He called you into his wisdom. He called you into his power. He called you into his favor. He called you into his authority. He called you into his realm. Now, is God playing? Is God just cracking some jokes close to the end time when the time is about to finish? One day we just see God's face from heaven. <laughs> you say, I've been laughing from the time I created man. I've been playing. I've been playing. Stop reading the Bible. You think God is in that business? You know, the way, listen, the way many believers treat God sometimes, we, we think God is a joker. 
because we are used to unfaithful people are you following me now and so we look at god and we say god is one of these people jerry god says i will bless you and he say god don't insult me i didn't ask you to talk to me you mustn't talk the bible says god is faithful that means he's too serious to be playing with you are you following me if he ever allowed your eyes to see anything in the world take it seriously he is not playing are you listening to me when he says your years will be like that of a tree god is faithful so for every scripture you read you say god is faithful he says you have been called the righteousness of god is god joking god is faithful a drunkard holds his bottle of stout he has not even finished it and someone preached and he drank and, and i mean as a person is preaching he's drinking and the holy spirit touches the person and he becomes born again and the bible says he's a brand new creation as if he has never seen again god are you lying or you are serious what's the answer god is faithful he's dependable he's trustworthy he's too serious to be playing with you so if the bible says we have been raised up with christ and we have been made to sit together in heavenly places far above principalities far above rulers every throne dominion and every name that is named brothers and sisters i ask you a question tonight is god playing is he joking is he playing pranks is he just trying to cajole you to encourage you to continue this journey of faith when god says you will call on one man and a nation will run to you is he telling the truth when he says arise and shine for your light is come that means he has equipped you with all the tools to arise god does not speak to people without making preparations if god looks at you let me tell you how god talks god can look at you and say um he doesn't talk as if you are supposed to have a need this is the interesting thing about God. God will look at you and say, um, Deborah, go to UN and tell the Secretary General that I'm not happy with you. That's how God talks. And then he, he leaves you with many, he, he scatters your mind and removes everything that can make you doubt. God, what? How do you pay the flight? Who will pay? God just said, go. Whenever he speaks, let me tell you, the moment God is speaking, there are other things happening. The moment he's speaking, if God looks at you and says, Mr. Man, I am sending you to the president. The moment he's saying that, the spirit is making all of the arrangements. Are you following me now? For in his word is life. In his word is power. Whenever God speaks, the same word that you are hearing is the same word that is making everything. God is faithful. His word is pregnant with all of the resources that will make it become whatever he has pronounced upon you. Hallelujah. And hear what God says. Jesus speaking to Satan. He says, if you are truly the son of God, turn these stones into bread. What did he say? He said, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that is uttered by that faithful God that whenever God speaks to you he is committed and he is faithful to bring it to pass let me tell you something God will never tell you what is possible with you except he's not God he dwells in a complicated realm called eternity even if God says, I will bless you, the way he will say it, you will need faith to always believe God. Are you following me now? That's the proof that is God. You will always need faith to believe God. Because everything he says will challenge you. Lazarus, her brother, is sick. He said that sickness is not open to death. Let's continue doing our business. 
then at a point by himself he said our brother sleeping he said Lazarus is dead let's go and wake him see how he was excited about it would you like to follow a man like that I've shared with you my story right not a nice experience better make sure you hear God before going to any mortuary hallelujah for those of you who have not been uh, I shared the story of how I went to the mortuary to raise the dead three days those of you who are medical doctors will laugh at me a bit, right? I went there, I stood there, looked, I said, which of the bodies they were planning to raise? After I prayed once, twice, three times, the guy didn't wake up. I told him, I said, people, get me out of this place. Get me out of this place. Hallelujah. Let me show you something. Sorry, I'll be using you. Malachi chapter Malachi chapter 3 after tonight's meeting many of you will not see any reason to doubt God again in your life Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 Yeah, let's read it together He said i am the lord i what i change it not that means when it comes to my faithfulness i am highly predictable are you following me now i am highly predictable when it comes to my faithfulness you can stake your life at it he said i change it not i change it not now that does not mean his methods do not change. He's talking about his nature, his character. And according to Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, I believe, turn here, Revelation 19, verse 11, you will find out that that word faithful is not just an attribute of him, it's his name, it's his identity. Revelation 19, am I correct, verse 11? Yes. Let's read it. One to read. Was called what? Faithful and true. Faithful and true. He said he was called. Is his name. Is his identity. He cannot separate himself from faithfulness. Hallelujah. So when God speaks to you, God is faithful. That he is dependable. You can take him by his word. You can trust him. Can I tell you something? All of the generals of old who shook cities, brought territories to a standstill, every one of them had nothing but the word of God. And they took that word and challenged systems they took that word many of them traveled from their countries to another country at the world hallelujah Sonde Adelaja left Nigeria and went to Ukraine at the word of God God called him and God told him he was going to cause a revival and shake Ukraine was God faithful God is faithful and a man entered flight. What is taking you to Ukraine? God said, ah. God said, and he led a revolution and changed the face of Ukraine till today and forever. Great man at the word of God. A great man called Pat Robertson, 700 Club. Hallelujah. Was a businessman, God told him, come, I want to use you. You know what is called 700 Club? 700, that word 700 was the little group they wanted to raise. Those who would partner the little TV ministry when he was going to start. God spoke to him. And he went at the word of God and the faithfulness of God. Many years later, he said, today, TBN, Am I challenging somebody? TBN. Paul and Jim Crouch. You know how they started? 
they just had some money and felt God was leading them to do a TV program. So they bought a little slot of time, about one hour. And when they heard it, you know how they think. They say, if you like this program, send comments, send mails to us. And they were surprised at the mails that came. And the people said, please go again, go again. We'll sponsor it. That little thing today has become what the prophet saw. He says, son of man, what seest thou? He says, the flying school. The power of media and technology in advancing the gospel. TVN today is the largest TV station in the whole world, reaching millions and billions with the gospel because one man chose to take God's faithfulness and rest his faith on it. I want to ask you a question. What is your faith resting upon? Many of us, our faith is resting upon the words of men, a man of God spoke to you. Now, I'm not against believing God of Joshua, God of music director. I'm not against it, okay? But when you idolize it, I say, oh, God of God, only answer me. You will only be fortunate if the God of God is the true God. If paradventure is not the true God, whoever is the God will answer you. Hallelujah. My faith is hinged upon the faithfulness of God. I'm saying this because if we are going to take the systems and take the kingdoms of this world, God is going to be committing dangerous words and instructions of us that will be bigger than us, bigger than every, bigger than your family put together. And God will expect you to know that he is faithful. God will send you to a house where someone has been on crutches for years. And God will say, go and lift the person. You have been praying in tongues. Oh God, we are going to the nations now. You stand before that house and you stroll as if you don't know that's the gate. And you are coming and God is saying, enter, I sent you. See, the next time you read the Bible, put yourself there. Put yourself there. You are faithful. So faithful in your ways. You are dependable. So dependable in your ways. You are glorious. So glorious in your ways. God is faithful. Listen, listen to me. There is no one greater than Him. He's not one of the many gods. Are you listening to me? He's not one of those gods. He's not a little higher than Satan. A competition was not taken and God came first. He's the only one. He's not first. He's the only one. If God is first, then he's not powerful enough because that means with time, somebody can overtake him. He's called Almighty. He took all the power by himself. Are you listening to me? God is not first position among all the gods. They had a relay and everybody ran. Buddha ran, everybody ran and then God just grabbed them. He just put his head and he said, yes, Jesus, no. No, no. He sits in a class all by himself. When he began to speak to Job, he was asking Job certain questions that only God can answer. Hallelujah. So where were you when the morning stars gathered themselves together? Where were you at the foundations of the earth? Who was there? The psalmist began to speak by the Spirit, talking about when God was founding the earth. Everybody in the earth today, no matter how arrogant and stubborn, came and found something. You found people, you found land, you found a God at work. Nobody began anything. So the one who began all things says he is faithful. Let me tell you something. No antichrist and Satan will wrap up this age. I hear people say Satan quickly. The end time is not coming because of Satan. God began the time. He will close the chapter by himself. If God does not close that chapter, even if they bomb every city, he will not come. He will sit quietly on his throne and be looking. 
men can preach anything they want to preach and scare people. God will say, I'm watching. Are you listening to me? God has never been bothered upon his throne at maybe an insufficiency of his ability to see the catastrophe happening to man. And he says, hey, my word is being threatened. There is only one thing that frustrates the manifestation of the word of God. What do you think the answer is? Man. Man. This is why God is meticulous about you. Satan cannot stop the plan of God. The question is when God speaks to you. If you do not align and believe him and take his word, you cripple him. Although he is almighty. The Bible says in Psalm 78, it said they limited God in the wilderness. So a man can limit God. He said they limited God by saying, can God make a table in the wilderness? When they got to the wilderness, they said, oh, at least in Egypt, we used to sit down on the ground and it looks like a dining table. Now we are in this place with heat in, in the afternoon, cold in the night. Oh God, can you feed us? And God said, hey, man. He said, let me show you something suddenly manna would fall and quails would fall and he said something he said let me show you how mighty i am there will be excess but don't care about it don't say anything another one will come tomorrow god is faithful i know my god is faithful oh. i have doubted him so many times how many times have we doubted him how do you feel when people doubt your word Imagine you told somebody you are going to cook for the person and later you come and you see that the person has gathered maybe he hid food in his, in his jacket and as he's saying, ah, you have come, suddenly he falls out. Yeah. Yeah. Say, sorry, I didn't mean it. I, I thought the rain, rain was falling and I thought you would not get back. God is faithful. Do you believe that God can make you what he has said? Do you believe God can transform you? Do you believe God can anoint you? Is he, is he just playing games or does he mean it? God took frail people like us and said, guys, can I use you? Do you believe? You say, Lord, I don't know whether we're... You see the man that said, help my unbelief. People laugh at him. That guy was a very wise man. He was absolutely intelligent. The same thing the, the prophet said. He said, can these bones live? It's better to ask God for mercy than to question his faithfulness. When the next time God speaks to you and you are not sure, just say mercy. Find songs about mercy. Just find songs and say, Lord, your mercy. See, many of you don't know how, you don't know how to get your way around God. When you understand the principles of God, David knew God. Ha! David knew how to get God. He would sin and do everything. And then he will come. He will dance and dance and dance. And God will be looking on his throne. And suddenly God will respond to the praises. And David will say, Oh God, he say, Am I not a sinner? Are you not a holy one? When a man has condemned himself, what will you tell him again? David was a smart man. Many of us don't know. We don't know. There was nothing David wanted that he would not get from God. At a point, God said, who is this man? He said, I have found my servant, David. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. He said, David is a man after my heart. Whenever there was trouble, David knew what to do. The moment the ark, there was trouble with the ark, David knew what to do. They will move small, offer sacrifice. Move small, offer sacrifice. Whenever God is about to get angry, they'll offer sacrifice. That's how the ark reached her. David. Listen, we need David in our time. Men who every time you see a situation, you just say, I know. God is faithful. Because he's faithful, he has implicated himself. You just lock yourself somewhere and start dancing. People say, this rent, if it's not paid tomorrow, you are out. You are not crying. Say, God, he is faithful. I know him. The faithfulness of God is an advantage to the believer. That whatever principle he has left in the world, you can take advantage. The Bible makes us understand that a certain king, sorry, you soon go and see that. A certain king in the Bible, I cannot remember exactly where. The, 
the nation of Israel alongside another nation ran and they wanted to catch that king and the Bible makes us to understand that that king it was obvious the king was going to die you know what the king did he carried his first son the one who will succeed him and slay the son the moment he did that the nation of Israel could not move again because God stopped moving God said hey who is this that understands the principle of making me first if you kill the person who will succeed you you have killed your future and said there's no point God is for you hallelujah Solomon when God said son what will I give you I know many of us say ah God sit down first sit down you will not stand to and sit down the Bible says you sit and laugh so sit down I'm about to make you laugh get in your book and you will list and list and say ah I forgot my brother oh Lord add him I forgot this adding. But look at what Solomon said. When God gave me the opportunity, he said, Lord, thank you. He said, Lord, you have brought these great people. They are your people. You see that? Your people. He committed God's jealousy because he said, they are his people. He said, Lord, am I able? You have now put me to succeed, my father. You put me, recognizing his authority. He said, God, am I able to help this man? He said, just give me an understanding heart. He knew that God is so faithful. He will never just, he will give you more than what you have asked for. So he said, God, let me let you do the giving by yourself because I will be foolish and my big mouth will limit me. So say it by yourself. And he left God. It's powerful to let God choose his blessing on you because he will, he will, he will beat whatever it is that you would have planned. And he said, an understanding heart. And God said, ah, ah. You didn't ask for the life of your enemy or this. He said, I will give you riches. I will give you honor. I will give you all of these things. Say after me, God is faithful. The faithfulness of God means all the principles he has put in the world work. All of them. So if you are tithing and you tithe with the mindset that God is faithful, then you know that it's not just church trying to eat your money are you following me now you know that god is faithful he said i will rebuke the devourer is he joking is he joking so on account of his faithfulness you commit him are you listening to me if someone comes to you and says there is a shortcut there is a shorter way of becoming you know that's that's what satan does when satan knows that there is no you must arrive where god has sent you you say all right let's negotiate let's reduce the journey since it's obvious that you get there, that's what he told Jesus. He said, just bow to me. I know that the whole thing is to collect these keys. Let me do my give you. Bow to me. The Bible says, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth his spirit. Are you listening to me? So every time you are trusting God and you are going through what people call the birth pains of delivery, the faithfulness of God will sustain you through that process. Men may laugh at you. Say you are always calling on God. You are, you are always shouting, fanatic, praying, talking nonsense. You will see who will marry you. Sit down there. You are talking about God. The other time we called you for party. You are doing your antisocial. I pray. Let a Pope come and marry you. Suddenly you begin to ask yourself, am I being stupid? Remember, God is faithful. Your father was there when they were signing the contract. And they told him, they said, oh God, add two zeros quickly. Add two zeros. You know how much will be your own. And when the right hand wanted to sign, God said, ah, that's not my ways. One billion would have entered your account and you clean your mouth, nobody will. And your father said, God has promised you to bless me. I will not sign it. So I walk out of the office. Let's go out here. Walk out. We'll still sign it in any way. And the people signed it and became billionaires. And your father is there, he cannot even afford a golf. And many people look at you and say, Now you are your father and your stupid Christianity. What is the response? God is faithful. Can God bless a man on account of integrity and faithfulness? Can you place your faith upon him? You didn't cheat. Your colleague was even healthy. I can help you. I can give you question three, question five. I don't know one very well, but at least I can help you with half. That's C already. And you would have done it quietly. You were sitting at the back. 
it was evening there was no light the sun was casting this way you would have done your thing quietly the lecturer called you and said just compromise and we'll give you c compromise well upper credit or b and you refuse and it looks like you are losing out i'm preaching to people who look like they are losing out because they are trusting god i bring you a message god is faithful the faithfulness of God is what commits him to abide by his principles. Are you listening to me? It has not failed anyone. It will not fail you. God is too mighty to start failing from your generation. And so I know that God will not fail me because he is faithful. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So let every doubt tonight fly away from your life because you know God is faithful. Tonight, after this meeting, you will call certain people who are about to give up even in your family and tell them, Hey! God is faithful. Don't give up yet. Your father said, we, we shall go to the Babala. Oh, let's just go. Whatever he tells us, we ask God. But let's go and see. God is faithful. Your mother has been sick 12 years. Maybe mad or something. There's nothing they have not done. You have prayed. You have prophesied. Another neighbor went to Babalawa and the woman came back fine. She's still fine today. Your mother is still sick. They say, won't you go? It's just herbs. You will not do anything. Herbs. But God is faithful. When a believer goes through any challenge on account of trusting God, I want you to stand tall and say, my God is faithful. I shared with the ministers yesterday a vision that I had about three or four days I was just lying down and suddenly I saw a vision it was like a cloud it was about to rain and suddenly I saw a writing he said the one who sent you will never leave you that was a statement the one who sent you will never leave you friends koinonia today is founded upon the faithfulness of God. Do you understand? Everything we do is founded upon the faithfulness of God. Your life, many of us have been disappointed because we have been trusting men. I've said you trust your teacher, you trust your, your nephew, you trust whoever. Would you say, Lord, I rest in your confidence. I've trusted my father and he didn't send allowance. I said, I trust this, I trust that. God is faithful. I bring you a strong message tonight. God is faithful. The faithfulness of God should give you confidence that whatever principle you are engaging, many of you may be praying, God will wake you and say, pray. There are spiritual um, hosts of wickedness trying to contend in your family. And the more you are praying, the more it's like nothing is happening. You are praying and then in the middle of the prayer they call you and say ah and you know the people can validate they can try to partner with satan to prove that god is not with hey so what is it so i can't even say it so they, ah, no, don't talk so this is serious and now you are you suddenly your faith turns to foolishness you have been praying for hours you are sweating now you look like an idiot in your prayer altar you are just saying, should I continue or stop? God, what are you saying? I bring you a message tonight. God is faithful. Let your faith lean upon the faithfulness of God. That whatever God has shown you about your life and about your family, I need you to know you are not the first person to trust God. He left a testament to show you all the people that trusted him. Abraham, David, you have not gone through half of what they went through. Many of them went through life and death situations that required minutes. The widow, remember the widow who was broke and they were about, they were about to carry her children. And she said, Lord, she went to the prophet and said, you know my husband worked diligently before God. This is an emergency something bad see if his recession it didn't start today in the land of samaria recession was so bad 
to a point that women were eating their children is it have we gotten to that point in nigeria no sir so what are we shouting about as if there is nothing new under the sun is it death is it sickness is it financial hardship god leaves the bible for you to scrutinize and say see this when you truly study scripture your conclusion will be god is faithful whatever excuse or disadvantage say my father was around if my mother was around if my brother didn't die my elder brother he just left home he got missing for 20 years we have not seen him and he's the only one who went to school now there's nobody to help us and the bible says can a woman forget her suckling child god is faithful i bring you a powerful word tonight challenging every doubt in your heart that this takeover generation that God is raising are men and women who will master the art of leaning upon his faithfulness that you know that God is faithful because friends let me tell you something challenges will come in this life that will attempt to shake your faith and the only anchor that you will have is the faithfulness of God. Job was so confident about God when his wife said, see, this embarrassment is too much. You know, when other people talk to you and your wife has not spoken, you still have solace. But when your wife speaks, you know that the issue has gone bad. And Job said, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? He said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Job said, I know! I know, I'm not trying to know. I know! That my redeemer live it. He didn't die a day before my captivity started. I know that my redeemer live it. What is God not able to raise back to life in your life? What is God not able to change? He created the heavens and the earth in seven days. How many days? If you calculate it mathematically, how long will it take you to change your life? There are six billion people on earth. They have not exhausted a, I mean, a sizable portion of the landmass on earth. And God created that landmass in seven days. Thank God you went to school. Calculate it. How long will it take God to change your life? One moment, an entire land called Samaria, they are eating their children. The next day, they are in abundance. If God says that thing will happen in Nigeria, 99%, including all of us, the anointed men, will not believe it. That God says, by this time tomorrow, or my next week, he said, next week, Koinonia, everybody in Nigeria will be entitled to 30,000 per month once you are 18 years. It will be a new policy that will be passed and there will be resources for it. The prophet that prophesies that kind of thing in Nigeria, if you ever become that prophet, Java, if by any means you prophesy that the first thing is you go to prison and then senate will probe you and then every religious body will probe everything out of you but when it happens you become a hero you only become a hero at the other side of obedience the other side of the world of God. when you can believe god when you trust him Hallelujah. Tonight, God gave me a message to shake away every doubt and unbelief in our hearts. And to prepare us to know that depending on the faithfulness of God is the secret of triumph in this life. Every other thing outside of him can fail. Are you listening to me? But there is one who changes. He said, I am the Lord. I change it. There is nothing God tells me that I will doubt him again. I've made up my mind. Every time I sense doubt, like David, I will say, Lord, only thou knowest. It's better to be neutral. Uh, sorry, like, like Ezekiel. He said, can these bones live? You know the thing with God? He will let you see it first. The Bible said they were very dry. If they were not dry, you could give you some medical explanations. Chamu. 
some medical explanations you would have explained how there are still some cations and anions and under certain circumstances if you can change the ph and do this and take a fraction and culture the cell then you build it back again the bible said they were very dry no hope for anything say can these bones live again the prophet looked say kai god only thou knowest i refuse to doubt you oh lord i now understand that song um please reduce the key let me sing it be magnified oh lord i have made you too small in my eyes it's not small in his throne it's in his eyes and that's a product of how small we have seen him in the world we are going to sing that song when we get to that part oh lord forgive me make sure you sing it and i have believed in a lie what is the lie that you are unable to help me but now oh lord I see my wrong. This is the prayer tonight. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my heart and with my song, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Let's sing the stanza again, everybody. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh, Lord. Come on, pray from your heart. Forgive me. And I have believed in the lie that you are unable to help but tonight from this message but now oh lord i see my wrong heal my heart and show yourself strong and in my heart and with my song oh lord be mad Oh Lord, when did you start calling yourself a failure? When did you suddenly admit the language of Satan and you started calling yourself a failure? When did you start calling yourself a defeated? When did you start calling yourself a powerless Christian? When did you lose out and give up on God? When did you suddenly start trusting in men? To say, God, you have failed me. Nigeria is where we are today because we do not believe God. Nigeria is in the Bible, Isaiah 18. There is a prophecy about this great nation. It wasn't just Lord Lugard that brought about Nigeria. We came as a definite product of prophecy. Let me ask you a question. Do you still believe that God is able? Do you still believe that God is faithful? Can God give your sister that child after 10 years? Is he still faithful? Or has he lost his power? Can your brother or your sister still get a job? Your family is suffering on account of righteousness. Can God step in? You are not married today because you have rejected every man who has come in the name of Satan. Is God still faithful? You would have been on first class right now if you had kept compromising from 100 level. And people have laughed at you and you are afraid I will not get a job. We have made you too small in our eyes, oh Lord, forgive us 
and we are believed in the light that you are unable to help us hey but now oh lord we see our wrong heal our heart and show yourself strong and in our hearts and with this song tonight oh lord be magnified oh lord i bring you a message of hope where you are filled go back again god is faithful god is faithful god is faithful i'm speaking to the spirits of men tonight god is faithful you stop praying because you thought your prayer was not generating energy that there is no difference between you and a believer i speak to you tonight god is faithful god is faithful god spoke to you that by the middle of the year there are certain blessings that you would have brought to your life right now you are in the second week of may there is no iota of it god is still faithful god told you there is a level of grace a level of insight and intimacy you will be walking in until now you have not seen it god is faithful many people call you and say where is your god i bring you a message tonight god is faithful now is not the time to give up there's a song i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding for the change is coming i won't give up lord i won't give up no 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 i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up i prophesy to you god is faithful until for the last time now i won't give up this is my confession lord i will not give up on you you are faithful till the answer come till the vision comes to pass you spoke to me by these two immutable things god cannot lie god cannot lie Let's sing it one more time. I won't give up, Lord. No, no, no. I won't give up. I keep holding on till my answer comes. It will come. Though the vision tarries, though the word tarries, though the prophecy tarries, it will come. It will come. One more time. I won't give up, Lord. No, no, no. I bring you a message of faith, a message of hope tonight. God is faithful. I won't give up, Lord. No, no, no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no matter what happens, in the midst of the sickness, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of every challenge, you sing like Don Muel. Lord, you seem so far away, a million miles away. I like that last part. It says, 
I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true. Sing it again. I lift my hands to honor you through the pain. Although you are crying, but you cry with your hands lifted. You cry, but you are saying, God, you are faithful. I have not seen the result. I have been praying. I have been fasting. But I know God is faithful. I lift my hands. I will cry with my hands lifted. Come on, confess unto God. I lift my hands to honor you. cry but with my hands lifted up every time a general lifts his hand the war is not over for though he slay me yet will I rise again he said though the vision tarries though the vision tarries can you rise up on your feet and say Lord I honor you through the disappointments, I honor you. Through the pain, I honor you. Through the tears, I honor you. Through the lack, I honor you. I have not seen the miracle, but I honor you. I refuse to complain. I honor you. Come on, prophesy. Lord, I honor you. I honor you. I honor you. I honor you. You are faithful. You are faithful. The finance will come. The lifting will come. The glory will come. The grace will come. My story will change. This is not the end of it. I lift my hands and I honor you. Come on, pray. Rakapato kapaya, repo shopariyakatai. I lift my hands. I honor you. With tears in my eyes, I still honor you. For God is faithful. Let your faith lean upon the faithfulness of God. By these two immutable things, it is impossible. Pray in the spirit. Generate faith. The vision will come to pass. Yes, you are the savior in your family. It is not a lie. You are the one. The word is still true. Yes, you will be that prophet. You will be that apostle. You will be that teacher. It does not look like it. Your ministry will flourish. Yes, your business will flourish. Yes, your spiritual life will flourish. Of the people of the earth, I see the Lord. He's exalted I above see the every Lord. doubt, above every fear tonight. Give me a prophetic word for you. Please turn to Exodus. My God is faithful.
verse 9. Hallelujah. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them encamping by the sea. The Bible says the Egyptians pursued them. He said and overtook them. Surrounded by trouble all over. But God spoke. Didn't he speak? Can I tell you something? Look at me. The fact that God spoke to you does not exempt you from challenges. Are you listening to me? Victory. The victorious life is not the life without challenges. The victorious life is the life that conquers every challenge. For when you serve God, you will get to a point in your life where challenges become your daily bread. And if your faith does not stand upon the faithfulness of God, then you might not last. Are you listening to me? And his army and overtook them encamping by the sea. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, what happened? The children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were in what? They were in what? They were in great fear. There are times in your life where situations will surround you. Surround your family. Nobody is walking in your family. From your father to your mother to everybody to you. There are times that these Egyptians come and surround us. And at that point, even you will begin to doubt the integrity of God's word. Well, let's read on. Oh, I have a prophecy for you tonight. The children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were in great fear. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. 11. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves. Look at me. How many of you have ever wished that God didn't take you to the point you are now? Have you ever got to that point where you say, Lord, I wish you, why did you anoint me? I was minding myself, the power of God hit me, I didn't ask for it. Look at the trouble you have caused me. Are you following me? You pray in tongues in your house, they call you a witch. Better stop that, where did you get that from? Now you are in trouble. Everybody doesn't like you in your neighborhood say Lord was I doing bad without praying in tongues was I going to miss heaven why did you add this complication to my life this is exactly what the Israelites the same people who were dancing and say thank you Jesus there is a way situations can overwhelm you that you ask some questions that by the time you come out you feel foolish that you ask those questions you will never believe that it's you that can ask that question oh God why me why did you give me this stupid father the same man you say I love with all my heart, now he has become a stupid father because of the heat of the challenges that are upon you. Your father will look at your mother and say, you are such a, did I really marry you? What happened to me? Ha! Ah, after 30 years, and when the whole situation pipes down, he can look at you and say, I didn't mean it. There was no school fees. The Egyptian said, were there no graves in Egypt? Look at Moses. Moses innocently came to deliver them. Now he's suffering from it, for it. To die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us from Egypt? Is not this the word that we tell thee in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve who? Look at the people who are talking. God's covenant people. But let's read verse 13 powerful and Moses said unto the people fear not tell your neighbor fear not say fear not 
tell you something, look up. Every challenge you face in your life is not as bad as it initially looks. Satan has mastered the art of magnifying challenges. And he says, God spoke to you. He said three days. Now it's two weeks. As if it's 20 years. And he will magnify it. He will convert the hours to seconds. And make it look far. And say, is God not unfaithful? And you say, yes. But Moses lifted up his hand. Unto the people. And he said, fear not. Stand still. And see the salvation, soteria, the healing, the deliverance, the blessing, the breakthrough that the Lord will bring. He said, for the Egyptians, this is my prophecy that God said I should speak to you. He said, for the Egyptians that ye see today, ye shall see them again no more. No, that's not the end of it. Don't say amen yet. There is one last word here. For let me tell you something there are certain things you are going through right now in your life it's called a phase of life when you break through you will never return there again forever oh yes there is such a thing as that he said these egyptians that you see these ones you are you are seeing them look at them very well because the only thing you have about them is the memories god will wipe them and clean them from your life The Lord will fight for you. Verse 14. The Lord will fight for you. He said, and you will hold your peace. You have tried fighting and fighting. Now the Lord. There is a reason why he is called the Lord. The Lord himself is rising up to fight for you. When God fights for you, you will win. You must win. You will win for sure. The Lord is about to rise up and fight for many people, many families, many of us in this place, because we trust him. He said, I the Lord, I change it not. The Lord told me to tell you that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. He said, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Egyptians of sickness, Egyptians of failure, Egyptians of bondage all kinds of Egyptians the Lord is saying that these Egyptians you see today that the Lord himself will arise let me tell you there are few times in the Bible where God has revealed himself as a man of war and for every time he reveals himself as a man of war I want you to know that the defeat will be utter because he will finish it and sign his signature as the mighty one of it I don't know about you but I believe the Lord and I believe his word. We are going to pray right now. Two prayer points. Hallelujah. Two prayer points. The first prayer point is we are going to say, Lord, I have faith in you. I know you are faithful. I kill doubt and fear. Everything that has made me to doubt your word and to doubt your promises. Whatever it is that has turned faith into foolishness in my heart. I pray, let there be a restoration of the faith of the Son of God. He said, contend for the faith that was once delivered unto you. Contend for the faith. Go ahead and pray. God is faithful. Lord, I contend for the faith. I believe you. I trust you. You will not fail me. Pray. Say, God, you are dependable. My supervisor will not frustrate me. You are dependable. Pray. You are dependable. I will not keep living from hand to mouth forever I know you will change my story I depend on you I depend on you I will grow to become a general and you will use me for your glory
Alléluia. 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 The next prayer point. We are going to pray. And you are going to say, Lord, give me a personal revelation of your faithfulness. You have had a teaching here. But you are going to say, Lord, do something between me and you that will convince me beyond every shadow of doubt that you are a faithful God. Activate my spirit. Quicken me by the agency of the Holy Ghost. Do something in my spirit, man, oh God. That I will not believe you today and doubt you tomorrow. That I will not trust you on Monday and doubt you on Tuesday. Grant unto me by revelation and understanding. Pray that I will comprehend. That I will comprehend. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I am convinced that God is faithful. In the name of Jesus, I look away from every limitation, from every doubt, and every fear, and I fix my gaze on Jesus. Jesus, I know you will not fail me. You are faithful, and you will prove yourself in my life. I know my change will come. Hallelujah. I want you tonight to leave this meeting. Don't just get excited and get emotional. I want you to leave and begin to search through scriptures. Are you listening to me? All through this week. Thank God many of you have finished exams. Let this week be a week of searching. All of the attributes of God that demonstrates his faithfulness in the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, you can use Google and search. Let those scriptures search, read it. Lock yourself and meditate upon it until it becomes your revelation that God is faithful. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. My faith is upon the faithfulness of God. This is why I smile all the time. That's why you will never see me put my hand on my head and they say, what is wrong? And I say, Kai, this life. Outside of God, I am a dead man. I don't need to stop breathing. I am a dead man. Oh, but with him. Ah. Hallelujah. Carry that faith and anywhere God takes you, I assure you, you will reign. The word of God will create things out of nothing right before your eyes on account of the faithfulness of God. I command every discouragement to melt away in this place. I command every doubt and fear to give way. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy the spirit of faith and of the revelation of the faithfulness of God. That you receive a baptism of the revelation of the faithfulness of God that you you will be so convinced that God is faithful that whenever doubt arises it will melt away in your heart in the name of Jesus Christ you are bigger than what people say Yahweh listen listen my God. Listen. I need you to understand that Satan himself was created by somebody. Are you listening to me? The Satan that people fear and dread. He was a cre he is still a creation. Someone, let me tell you, a creation can never be greater than his creator. Oh, Satan was created at a time T. 
satan and let me tell you according to the law of science hallelujah that everything that is created can be destroyed is what was not created that cannot be destroyed are you listening to me satan is at the very root of every sickness i want to provoke your spirit as we lose this atmosphere for my father to have a convocation through this place you will never 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 go back the same i assure you you will not go back the same hallelujah hallelujah i need you to understand that jesus christ is not a little more powerful than satan you know that's our mindset we think satan is great but then jesus christ maybe by two or three points are you joking the bible says there was war in heaven he didn't even fight it was michael that threw satan down when he went to the grave he said holy spirit you can go come back on the third day as a man i can take this guy jesus did not go to hell with the holy ghost the real source of his power he said this guy is too cheap spirit of god wait you can come back on the third day bible says if that same spirit are resurrected christ are you listening to me i'm trying to provoke something in your spirit because in life what you tolerate you will never change too many people justifying sickness justifying oppression justifying setbacks you're not moving forward and you're justifying it tonight there will be an anger in your spirit and he said lord no way tonight i will hold on to you something about my life will be altered for good something about my life every devil i don't care what medical name it is called it's a spirit cancer is a spirit hiv is a spirit hear me tumor is a spirit death is a spirit i don't care what it is called and the bible says wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him an identity a name that is above cancer above HIV above high blood pressure said at the mention of that name it is a negotiation will happen every knee come on there are some knees that must bow tonight hey. there are some tongues that must confess hallelujah some things must end the woman with the issue of blood came to him she said if i may but touch the helm of his garment and she was made whole there is no impossible situation in this place tonight pack up that language of impossibility and kick it out of this place inside outside many of you are standing stand because your miracle will, will locate you right there it's like your gsm number it can't enter two phones it will get to you by the spirit bible says for this purpose the son of god was made manifest that he may destroy put to an end until the lion roars every other animal can claim to be a lion oh but when the lion roars the difference is clear and can i tell you something he that is upon the throne is about to roar in this place like you have not seen oh yes he's about to roar and god will make a caricature out of satan in your life in a way that will shock you tonight hear me i'm not trying to motivate you i'm not trying i'm provoking something in your spirit don't justify any sickness I don't care what it is 
don't justify any situation leave it from hand to mouth stop justifying it tonight is the night to press and say lord for my family enough is enough come on enough is enough that you don't move forward in life no sir that's why god put this miracle service i'm putting a holy anger in your spirit until you get angry with where you are once you keep tolerating where you are let me tell you you will never move forward when a baby is in the womb of the mother for nine months the baby will tolerate that environment after nine months the baby will say time up time up i need a change of environment and brothers and sisters there's got to be a dissatisfaction in your spirit as i prayed and prepared for this meeting i told the lord i said lord i'm angry about some levels in my life and you're going to shoot me like an arrow an arrow that's why god brought you that's why you're here tonight bible says and jacob wrestled jacob said i won't let you go leaving you is not part of the options until you bless me hello him madonna 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 Elohim 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 Madonna Elohim. Isaiah 61 ah, 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 ah. Elohim ah, 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 ah. Elohim He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. My father is changing. Papo Sotaya. He's healing everything. He's recreating everything. He's transforming everything. I know him. I know him. He's changing everything. By his spirit and I. God is changing, I tell you. Hallelujah. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me. To preach good tidings to the meek. He had sent me. These are the categories of people tonight. To bind up the broken hearted. To proclaim liberty. To the captives. To set them free. And the opening of prisons. Hear me. There are people who are in prisons in this life. All kinds of prisons. What do you call a terminal disease? There are all kinds of prisons represented in this place. But the spirit of the sovereign Lord, like a mighty rushing wind, 
it's across the length and the breadth of this place inside and outside and for as many who are streaming with us online the spirit of God turning every wilderness to a fruitful vine and every fruitful vine to a forest to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and a day of vengeance there are people that need the justice of God in their life there are people here that need what we call the vengeance of God our families have suffered untold casualties hear me there is a dimension of God called his merciful dimension there's something called the mercy seat but there's something called the judgment throne and hear me tonight there will be a decree of judgment oh I know you don't like this it's part of his nature some there will be a decree of judgment it's not enough for you to just get healed or get liberated God who is just must he must bring some justice in your family many of you will know the judgment you will see the side of God tonight that will make you afraid. To comfort all who mourn. To appoint unto those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. An oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Said that they might be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. Isaiah 62 verse 1. Let me read a prophecy about what God is. Let me tell you, God is more eager to bless you than you are to receive tonight. Believe me. God is more eager to bless you 62 I don't know about you but I'm going to put my name there for Joshua Selman's sake I will not hold my peace tonight and for his sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and thy salvation as a lamb that burneth verse 2 he said and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name that's what the lord told me a new song and a new name thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the lord shall name verse 3 thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of god a royal diadem a royal diadem I believe, I believe, I believe, oh Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. Do you believe your oppression ends tonight? Do you believe the sickness dies tonight? Do you believe the retrogression ends tonight? I believe hey. just move in this place I like to just 
set your heart. I need you to realize, hear me, that what is going to happen to you tonight is really not what God is about to do. It's the manifestation of what Christ has done in the cross. Are you listening to me? Until you realize that, it will be difficult for you to receive. God is not trying to bring healing. He's trying to enforce in your life the healing that has been established. Hallelujah. Every miracle, every manifestation of the Spirit in this place is on account of the finished work of Christ. Say after me, the finished work. The finished work. Cancer died in Christ 2,000 years ago. HIV died in Christ. Hear me? Oppression died in Christ. Every name, every sickness, poverty, lack, retrogression, all kinds of challenges died in Christ 2,000 years ago. And let me tell you something. Satan is not powerful. This is a revelation that must be crystallized in your spirit. I don't care how many demons you have seen in the realm of the spirit. I have seen them and I'm still saying Satan is powerless. Hear me. Satan is only as powerful to the degree to which your ignorance or disobedience permits him to be. Are you listening to me? And so you must realize that is your right in Christ Jesus. To receive that which the son of the living God has died for he died for your salvation the word salvation is the Greek word soteria and it is a very pregnant word it doesn't just mean salvation from sickness it means salvation from sin salvation from sickness salvation from poverty total package of redemption the total package of redemption Hallelujah. For death could not hold him captive, even in the grave. Jesus is Lord for death. For death. Jesus no sickness could hold him in hell no oppression could hold him when the gates refused to open there was a cry lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted O ye ancient doors and they asked the question they said who is this king of glory there was a reply he said the Lord Yahweh strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle said the Lord of hosts is his name so I need you to realize hear me you're not fighting with Satan to claim yours to claim your no 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 there's no fight tonight we are stepping upon the established victory of Christ Jesus to receive by faith the fullness of the riches of the benefits of redemption that's why I like that song that says my faith is reaching out to you that you reach out that's all you need to do tonight for that sickness you need to reach out he said thou son of David I believe oh I believe don't start asking questions how will the growth disappear? How did it come in the first place? Were you born? You've never asked a question how the swelling came. Why should you ask how it will disappear? Don't ask how the leg will grow out. That's none of your business. Don't ask how the ears will open. That's none of your business. That's the dynamics of the spirit. The Bible says for us, you do not know the way of the wing or how bones 
are formed in the womb of her that is with child so you do not know the way of the Lord I'm provoking you tonight I don't care what that challenge is we are going to be stepping by faith there are many of you who have been oppressed by demons demons torment you and oppress you I saw a lot of this in my visions through the week enough is enough are you listening to me the Bible says we have been raised up with Christ say after me I have been raised up inside outside shout it I have been raised up and I've been made to sit with Christ far above cancer say it far above cancer far above infirmity far above causes far above death far above every spirit you are far above epilepsy oh yes so I don't care what sickness it is it's under your feet and you've got to enforce the revelation of the word of God one last scripture Luke chapter 10 such a mighty presence of the precious spirit in this place Luke chapter 10 when Jesus sends the 70 frail people with no power in themselves the Bible says they went and they came back with a report verse 17 and the 70 returned again with joy they returned with what they returned with what that's exactly how you are returning back to your destination he said they return with joy they return with joy saying Lord even the demons are subject unto us through thy name and Jesus said something in verse 18 I love it so much he said unto them I beheld I beheld Satan as lightning fall I beheld Satan I beheld cancer I beheld infirmity I beheld poverty I beheld death fall hallelujah so let your heart be set let your heart be set there are many of you that need miracles in this place that only God can give some of you have come here with your medical reports while we appreciate medicine as a contribution to help humanity I like you to know that there is only one qualified person and he's the king of kings the Lord of Lords hallelujah to end every tragedy many of you have suffered all kinds of things what people call generational curses all kinds of delays marriage delays financial delays I don't care what it is called tonight but Jesus is Lord in this place and he said if I be lifted up so God is going to step in in this place the worship people got it precisely they said speak Lord brother sister when he speaks everything will have to obey when he said let there be light the Bible says there was light so when he looks at you and says cancer go it will go when he says favor come it will come when he says increase come it will come 
It's what God is doing in this place. Even by His Spirit. So in one minute, i like all of us to raise a cry and tell God why you came here tonight. Inside and outside, come on. Raise a cry. Say, Lord, I have come for the healing of my body. Lord, I have come for the fibro to die. I have come for the migraine to go. I have come for my genotype to be changed. Get angry. If doctors say you are SS, say, Lord, that may be their report. Tonight, I'm leaving this place. Hey, hey. It's none of your business how it will happen. Go ahead and pray. That barrenness will die. If you are here and you've not had your child, even if you don't have a womb, stand up and pray. Say, Lord, I celebrate children. Hallelujah. I beheld Satan. I beheld Satan as lightning fall. I beheld Satan. I had beheld Satan. I beheld Satan. Oh, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I'm angry in my spirit. Brothers and sisters, enough is enough. It's time for you to experience the hand of God. It's time for your life to move forward. It's time for oppression to end. Come on, express yourself. Thank you, Jesus. I see angels in this place. Great angels. Many angels. Inside and outside. Several kinds of angels. Several kinds of angels. Seka pata la mambo go besia. Fani bos. Seke le bom rega de le bom bom sakata. Se. Alleluia. 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 Watching a lady outside, outside, outside. Please, those outside, lift up your hands. I want you to bring that lady in this place. The power of God is going to come upon a lady right now as I'm speaking. Of course, there will be a ripple effect, but if you can locate the first lady, please bring her outside. A lady. See a healing miracle. Bring the lady here. Rakatos 
Satan, end your oppression over her life right now. I command those evil spirits tormenting you to go, 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 go. Hear me. Now listen, listen. At the count of three, everyone here with a demonic case, whether it's madness, psychosomatism, devils oppressing you, hear me. The power of God inside and outside. Oppression will end right now. At the count of three. I see demons flying around the air. At the count of three. One. Two. Three. Shake up. Oppression go. Go. I cast out devils. I cast out devils. I cast out devils. Bring them to the front. I cast out devils. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Satan day. Go. 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 I need all of them outside. I need all of them outside. There are some people possessed with demons. I command you be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Inside and outside. All kinds of spirits. 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 I command it out of you. Bring the lady. All kinds of spirits. All kinds of spirits. Out of them. 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 All kinds of demon spirits. All kinds of demon spirits. Come out. Come out. Come out. Inside and outside. Abala Katam Regadevaros. Take a toss of the toss. Spirits of lust. Come out. Come out. Come out. All kinds of spirits. Out of them. Out of them. Inside and outside. Out of them. Out of them. Those possessed with demons. You are free. Now. Every demon. You know my voice. I sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit. Let God's people go. 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 I see my spirit. Hear me. I see people who are dedicated. I'm seeing some people standing in front of a river line area. A river line area. And being dedicated to some kind of demonic things. Right now. Katoso tepaka, rendo shopo kosupa, ekoria kapaka, rendo sete paka, eke basika, amrata batekete, rekete basoko. I command you by the power of the Holy Ghost that you are free. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I see a lady 
who was sent in the occultic realm to come and stop this meeting when I come out to minister. How, how, can, you, how can you think like that? Now, 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 deliverance, now, now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, let that demon go. I set you free. Mission saved. Mission saved. Come out of fire now! Come out of fire now! Come out of fire now! Come out of fire! Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do, and greater works. Jesus said it, greater works. There's one more lady. There's one more lady. I see the demons around saying they will not let you go. Let that girl go now. 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 The lady is outside. Let that girl go now. Let that lady go now. Now, 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 Let that lady go now, now, let that girl go now. I'm waiting for a lady outside. The fire of God, not just the power, the fire of God is what will fall upon that lady. Hallelujah. All of you here, Satan, I'm about to speak to all of you here, and the demons will go now. Come out of them, all of you in front, come out of them. Now, now, I see in the realm of the spirit a snake. I'm not just seeing this lady, I'm seeing a snake. I don't care what you are. Go, 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 go. That wicked, look at what she's doing. I see the way she's behaving. Look at, look at this, look at this. See the way she's behaving like a serpent. See. Oh, fire upon you! Fire upon you! Fire upon you now! Out of her! 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 Come out of her! I set you free. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we want to see you. We want to hear from you. Emmanuel, 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 Emmanuel. we want to see you. We want to see you.
types. That's what I hear in my spirit. Genotypes. Right now, hear me. Whether you are SS or AS, and hear me, Kapokataya. Rekotosopeketa. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Now, inside and outside. I command your genotype to change. Now, now. Now, God is giving miracles all over, all over, all over, inside and outside, changing genotypes, changing genotypes. That's what God is showing me, changing genotypes. There's a surgical operation of the Spirit of God, changing genotypes, changing genotypes. Changing genotypes. Hallelujah. Any heart condition whether it's a hole in the heart if you have any heart condition inside or outside any cardiovascular issue blood circulation issue whatever it is inside and outside i'd like you to lift your hands right now any heart problem i don't care what it is lift up your hands because you are about to receive your liberty hear me god is healing all over even before i mention your case check yourself check yourself you will find out that you're getting healed don't sit back check yourself and run quickly meet the members of the media right here you will testify so check yourself miracles are happening everywhere right now in the name of Jesus every hole in the heart I command you to be closed now in the name of Jesus every blood circulation problem I command you be free from it now in the name of Jesus heart condition be healed check yourselves now check yourselves breathe in and out do what you couldn't do do what you couldn't do there are healings i'm seeing it many of you are getting healed right now members of the media let them see you so that they can register their testimonies as many of you who are receiving miracles walk up to the ushers or the members of the media team there are miracles happening right now right now Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Partial or total blindness. If you're totally blind, inside and outside, or partially blind, right now, there are some of you that are not seeing me clearly. But the moment I pray, the power of God will come and 2020 vision will be restored. Believe me, it will happen right now. Hallelujah. Just one shout, inside and outside. We are going to shout the name Jesus. Lay your hands on your eyes. If you have any issue of eyesight, uh, eye problem, just believe, you will be surprised. Right now, many of you, as you shout Jesus, your sight will be restored, inside and outside. Locate the people, the ushers, immediately make sure you check yourself are you ready to shout at the count of three we're going to shout and i see rapid angelic activities already in the realm of the spirit one two three Perfect vision restored. 
perfect vision. Perfect vision. Perfect vision. Be restored. Hallelujah. Epilepsy. What I hear my spirit. Epilepsy. Does anyone make sure you stand in not just for yourself but for your loved ones? Look at what is happening to this lady. Every devil. I see the spirit of epilepsy upon her. Now, come out of her. Come out of her. She's going to begin to cough out things. She's going to begin to cough out things. She's going to begin to cough out things. She's going to start coughing out things. She's going to begin to cough out things. You are free. That devil. That devil of epilepsy. Leave her forever. Everyone with any epileptic issue, inside and outside, right now, I command you, be free, be free, be free, be free, be free from epilepsy, be free from epilepsy, in the name of Jesus. You are glorious, so glorious to you. So glorious in the world, you are glorious, Lord. You are glorious, so glorious in the world. You are powerful, Lord. You are powerful, Lord. You are powerful, Lord. You are powerful, Lord. was brought from Taraba. Please bring him out. The young man who came from Taraba. Is he here? There's a young man who came in. This is not word of knowledge. I got word that there's a young man who came for healing from Taraba. Hallelujah. As soon as you locate him, please let him come. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to pray for blood diseases. I see a number of people here with HIV AIDS. I see a number of people with um, infections, blood infections quite a number of people as I pray for you right now inside and outside those streaming online and everywhere you can hear my voice oh, okay you're the lady oh you're standing on his behalf he didn't come oh okay that's all right standing on his behalf. What's wrong with him? Can you help me? That he has three uh, adverse drugs reaction due to three poisoning. Okay. Fainting, three poisoning. Stiff neck and so many other uh, problems. Blood poisoning? Uh, poisoning due to drip. Drip, drip poisoning. Drip poisoning. Okay. He has 
kidney I, stones. Yes, I is fainting and stiff neck. I said extract her. So okay. many things. The doctors asked him to stay back with Joseph. He can't continue. I'm going to pray for you. You are standing on his behalf. And the Lord of glory will touch him. Are you listening to me? Right now. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him be free. In the name of Jesus. We call him free. And we celebrate his liberty. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blood diseases blood diseases right now everywhere you can hear my voice every blood infection I don't care what it is from HIV to any other kind of blood infection be healed now in the name of Jesus be healed now in the name of Jesus Now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the last set of people I'm going to pray for, then I'll just step back a little, just allow a few ministers to um, just minister as the Spirit will for a while, and then we'll come and just release miracles in mass, and then we'll round up. Hallelujah. Asthma. Janet. Is there a lady called Janet in this place? Inside or outside? Kapo Sopariaka. Kateko Tosubai. Mampo Rekebai. Rekatalianta. Rekete Bariaka. Barate Basimeketea. Koto Soperia. Karenda Sobosha. Janet, Janet, Janet. Your Janet. What's wrong with you? Can we have the mic? Are you well? I see. Do you have any problem with asthma or any breath problem? Yes. Please look hello, look at me. Can you talk? You're talking to the audience. Do you have any what's the problem explain it to us sometimes my heart used to beat very very fast your heart used to beat my body becomes very weak. you have irregular heartbeats that's what i'm seeing yes. sometimes it looks like you are passing out yes. is that correct yes. right now are you listening to me yes. not later yes. right now you're going to be free look at me have i met you have we discussed on this have we discussed the lord brought you out right now right now you're going to be free are you listening to me? Hold my hands. That devil, leave her now in the name of Jesus. You are free in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, asthma. No, no, no. We're going to pray in mass, but since you have come out, in the name of Jesus, look at me. See, the power of God is moving through your body. My God. I see a devil. It's not just asthma, it's a demonic oppression. Come on, how dare you come close to me, Satan? Out of her now, in the name of Jesus. Come out of her in the name of Jesus and be free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just let her see the power of the Holy Spirit upon her. Totally free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Asthma, kaposa tabariakata. Every kind of asthmatic condition, hear me. The moment I pray for you, I like you to breathe in and out as hard as you can and do what you couldn't do. You will find out that you'll be healed instantly. There's an anointing for asthma. Asthma inside and outside. Are you ready now? Are you ready now? In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command asthma be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, inside and outside, be healed. In the name of Jesus, outside yourself, begin to breathe in and out. You will find out that you are healed right now. Right now, I see two ladies in the auditorium being healed right now. Two ladies, at least in the auditorium, being 
healed instantly of asthma. Hallelujah. Look at me, friends. I need you to know that there is only one personality who deserves to be glorified in this place. Are you listening to me? Every of these manifestations are only but acts of God's grace and mercy through human vessels. There is no champion in this place. There is no celebrity in this place. There is only one who deserves. His name is Jesus. I like you to shout his name. Jesus! Shout his name. Jesus! Inside and outside. Shout his name. experiencing over a long period of time excess flow of blood is not usual it's a disease excess flow of blood through your life excess flow out of your system where are you just lift up your hands it's a disease it's a disease excess flow of blood coming out of your system coming out of your body out of your woman I declare supernatural healing for you right now. That lady there, I declare in the name of Jesus that that blood rise up now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon you right now and that blood stops flowing right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I see in my vision a woman who needs a baby. I see a woman who came here in need of a baby. Where are you? Inside, outside. I'd like you to come. A woman, you came here in need of a baby. Where are you? Come. I'm seeing in my vision a woman who needs a baby. Carry the baby. Come. Come. Mommy, I want you to know that Jesus is a miracle worker. And we stand here by the word of the Lord. We declare to you right now that the Lord gives you a baby now supernaturally in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I see you celebrating with your baby now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I declare that you take in supernaturally and bring for that baby in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I will see the Lord gives you a son. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold on, hold on. I hope every one of you standing is married. You're standing in for your auntie. How about you, my dear? You're married. All right. I declare a release of a baby for you now. I release this miracle to you. Take it in the name of Jesus. We declare that you give birth to a baby supernaturally in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, hold on. I won't see that the challenge is not with you. I know it's a social reason, but I see that it has to do with your husband. Am I correct? Am I correct? I see that the problem is not basically with you, but it has to do with your husband. But nonetheless, I declare a miracle. I declare supernatural healing. I declare that a baby be given to you and even more children in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you in Jesus' name. And for you, we declare that wherever you're standing for, receive a baby in the name of Jesus. We declare it so in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a little child. I see a little child around the age of five. I don't know, but I believe that is somebody's family member here, a little child around the age of five, having certain challenge that has to do with his bone, a male that affects his ability to walk. It has something to do with his bone. If I'm speaking about your brother or your nephew, I'd like you to just lift up your hands. I see the angel of the Lord bringing a miracle right now. 
who is that person just lift up your hands the lord is bringing a miracle is your brother around age five okay i declare in the name of jesus that the lord gives him a miracle i declare that his bones are healed supernaturally in the name of jesus i see someone you're standing in for a relative i believe an auntie your yoruba she has fibroid this person you're standing for has fibroid and you're yoruba who is the person you're standing you came in trusting the lord to heal your auntie she has fibroid your sister your relative your sister i declare a supernatural release right now i declare that she's healed in the name of jesus i release that miracle to her. i declare that fibroid is gone supernaturally and you return with a testimony in the name of jesus okay i also declare the same miracle for you i declare supernatural healing for that relative in the name of jesus i declare that she's healed and delivered from fibroid in the name of the lord jesus christ i declare it so for you i declare healing in the name of lord jesus christ fibroid is gone by the anointing of the spirit in the name of the lord jesus put your hands on your eyes i see the lord wanting to heal your eyes as I pray for you, you're going to check your vision now and tell us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I declare that our vision is healed and restored. I release the healing power of God. You are healed now in the name of the Lord Jesus. You're healed in the name of the Jesus. Check it. Check your vision has been healed and restored. Check it. Just look what you couldn't do before. Check do what you couldn't do before. Just check your vision is healed right now. Check it here and then you tell us. I see someone, your father works, he does an industrial work, and then as a result of that, he has had certain challenge upon his health that came due to exposure to the nature of his work. And it has been a serious concern to your family. I don't know what that infirmity is. But I'm seeing that person represented here. Your father contacted a challenge with his health as a result of his work. Where you just lift up your hands. You are inside, you are outside. Just lift up your hands. The Lord is bringing his power there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare that your father is healed. Whatever challenge that come, came upon his life as a result of that industrial exposure. I declare supernatural healing to him right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I see a brother I see the Lord says there's a work of deliverance that God will begin to do in your family the brother sitting close to you sitting close to you I like you to lift up your hands I see the Lord says the spirit of the warrior comes upon you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare that the deliverance of the Lord come to your household right now. I declare that the spirit of the warrior come upon you. Take it now in the name of Jesus. Jessica, please, I want to pray for you. I hear the Lord says, my trumpet of jubilee is sounding over your family. I hear God says I'm bringing a restoration. I hear God says I'm bringing a restoration. For there has been a conniving. I see a connivance. I see conspiracy that has been over your family, over your father, over your father, particularly for many years. But God says I'm bringing deliverance wherever He is, and I'm bringing restoration. God says your family will yet know joy. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God says He will perfect your mom. He said he will perfect all that concerns her. He says he will perfect her health in the name of the Lord Jesus. I see many hands being stretched forth towards you to help you. And God says, For my light is upon you for favor. For my light is upon you for favor. I see a little child. I see the spirit of infirmity come upon this child. But the Lord says there's healing tonight. A little child in your family, a little child. 
I see the spirit of infirmity come, but the Lord says there's healing tonight. Father, we give you praise. We declare it turn around by your spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, is Shadi here? No, not you. Shadi, Shadi, our minister and her husband. If they are here, please let them come. I see the Lord showing me things about them. Father, we give you praise. We bless you, Jesus. We give you praise. We bless you, Jesus. We give you praise. God says for me to tell you that I have it all planned out for you. God says when he brought your, you and your husband together, he has it planned out for you. I see the Lord taking you. I see the both of you standing in a strange land. I see the both of you ministry preaching the gospel of Jesus. And I even hear many people say that if in your house is deliverance. And I hear God say he brings upon you in a new way the spirit of sin. And God says deliverance are yet come to many in the name of Jesus. For I see many marching to your house and say that is the altar of the Lord for your house shall be called a house of prayer. I see many coming to your house for prayer. I see many coming to your house for prayer. And God says, I bring my fire upon your altar today. Upon your altar in the name of the Lord Jesus. I said the Lord mentioned the name Kogi State. And I said the Lord mentioned the place Akure. I don't know what that means to you. But I see that your feet will be established in that place. And in that place you will be a chosen instrument for the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I don't know, but I'm hearing the name Dili. Your Dili or Dili is part of your name. Dili, I'm hearing the name Dili. Just come quickly. Dili is part of your name. Dili, I'm hearing the Lord. Give me the word Dili. For you, Dili, I hear the Lord says you begin to do a new thing in your life and even in your family. I hear God says I'm even extending. I'm attending to that financial situation in your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I see the Lord reaching out even to touch your mom. And God says, I perfect her health right now in the name of Jesus. God says, I perfect her health right now in the name of Jesus. I don't know, but I believe the Lord was speaking for him. Be blessed. I release the blessings of the Lord upon your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I see in the vision, I I see like an electric pole, like an electric pole, a cable fall upon somebody. And I see that the enemy intends to have you electrocuted. I see that the enemy wants to attack somebody through electrocuting. And for this person, you have had this experience before. You, you have been terribly electrocuted at one point of your life. Terribly electrocuted. And I see the enemy bring that to you right now. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands. I avert that for you in the name of Jesus. I declare that that attack from the enemy is averted in the name of the Lord Jesus. I see somebody behind me among the sisters with an abdomen, abdominal pain. I ask right now that let the hand of the Lord touch you. I don't know who you are, but I ask that let the hand of the Lord touch you right now. I declare the healing power of God to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That lady that came here, that was prayed for, that was convulsing. I see that you have challenge around your tummy area, excruciating pain that even come to you, especially around your monthly circle. I declare that that pain is gone right now. I declare that healing come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
someone you prayed for that has um, trust in the Lord for a child. Before you started praying, I saw in the flash, I saw the angel of the Lord giving her a boy. So when you mentioned the word boy there, I was so very shocked. Amen. And also, before the meeting, God has been telling me how he's going to be doing healing and changing genotypes. And when Apostle was ministering, I see the angel of the Lord doing a healing, changing somebody's genotype by the behind a lady's genital behind there by the left hand side and another lady outside the overflow I said the Lord as you leave here just go try do some one or two checkups your test the Lord is changing your genital and you uh, stand up during the prayers I see the Lord doing a healing in your heart I see the Lord doing a healing and I see the Lord releasing an anointing upon you even for the media again I see a man to release upon you so strongly upon you. And the Lord said he's going to he's going to confirm that to you tonight. That what the Lord said. Then there's another lady that has HIV. You've been on drugs for some time. But for the past uh, one week, you've been feeling anytime you woke up in the morning to take your drugs, you always feel very disturbed. You always cry. I see a lady. A lady. For the past one week, you've been you've been on drugs, you're not have you an HIV positive, you've been on drugs for some time, but for the past one week you've been having a lot of trouble in taking your drugs, I see the Lord healing you healing you, then also you there, you my sister there you, I see the Lord doing a work in your family oh, me. I see the Lord doing a, 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 a work of uh, restoration in your family and the Lord says he's going to speak, he's going to perfect in Jesus name there's a guy that has a little challenge with the mind. A guy that has been somebody here with a pain on your left knee then another person on your right knee for the one on your right knee when you stand usually when you stand you feel so much pain who is that person please come out okay quickly come out i think there are some sets of people you've had um, a doctor's report not a report from the bank now hallelujah a doctor's report doctor's report a doctor's report Please, amongst the ones with the doctors, it was specifically somebody with two weeks ago, just roughly two weeks. The doctors report amongst them, specifically, like two weeks ago. Who is that person? 
Hallelujah. Then there's somebody specific that please look at me. You have pain just here. For those outside, I hope you can see just here, not exactly on your spinal cord, just by the side. If you're that person, quickly come out here too. And I began to receive in my spirit that God wants a lot of you to know you've been hearing people say a hey, yeah specifically to you and you've been feeling sorry for yourself and you've been sympathizing for yourself but the Lord wants you to rise <laughs> the Lord wants you to rise hallelujah the Lord wants you to rise those of you with the challenge with the knee please just for those with the doctor's report man of God will pray for you here yeah? knee cases please just put your hands on your knee church stretch forth your hands towards them let's pray hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ, we speak to every knee. We command healing right now. Every knee, we command healing. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the person with the right, with the problem with the right leg, I said like healing flowing through your right leg. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now we speak healing to your leg. Healing every pain, let it go. We command it to go. For the person with the pain, that, I command that pain to leave you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every report, every devilish report you've heard from Satan, the Lord changes it in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that came out for the report, please step forward. Ah, Allah Pantron Shakara Patele Nakumana Nabaka Banusia. Ila Prado Safa Tayala Branda Kapapa Shaka Taragada Namada Ragada Nabaku Sakaya. Lebrando Sopele Branda Kapaka Shaka Tay. Just look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at me. Just look at my eyes. Just, just keep looking. Don't be tired. You don't know what is happening to you. Don't stop. You don't know why I'm telling you to look. Something is happening to you. Charles, look at my eyes. Just look. Look at my eyes. Just keep looking at me. I should tell you that I have set my eyes on you. Are you listening to me? The Lord says for me to tell you, I have set my eyes upon you. Medical report or no medical report, I call you home totally free now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You need to be very serious with the Lord. You can't be one leg in and one leg out and expect Satan not to oppress you. Does this make sense what I'm saying? Does it make sense? Just yes or no? Are you listening to me? You can't be one leg in and one leg out and expect Satan not to get you. The things that I would want to do, I do not find myself doing. But the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. God lamented and said, O wretched man I am who shall deliver me from the body of death. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I set you free. In the name of Jesus, I set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Totally free. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. 
Inside and outside, just lift your right hand. Only your right hand. Only your right hand. Only your right hand. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Only your right hand. And I'm going to count four. At the count of four, there are certain people. At the count of four, there are certain people. Listen, the power of God is going to sweep inside and outside. And this right hand is a scepter of an unusual level of dominion. Get ready. One, two, three, four. Now, inside and outside. Inside and outside. On your right hand. Inside. Outside. Inside. Outside. It's an impartation. Supernatural dimension. Unusual kingdom authority. Unusual kingdom authority. Just keep your right hands lifted up. Keep your right hands lifted up. Keep your right hands lifted up. Kingdom authority. Step into it. Kingdom authority. According to the vision given unto me, let it be confirmed in this realm. I call it forth from the heavens. At the back, get ready. At the back, it will sweep like fire. At the back, get set right now. Outside, outside, it's going to be like a boat of electricity. Outside, I see angels outside. Say you will strengthen my right hand. Hallelujah. I see the number 36 in the spirit. There are 36 of you. Real fire. Listen, hear me. Hear me now. Fire, I mean physical, literal fire will come upon you right now. 36 of you. Now, now, receive it. 36 of you. Fire, literal fire. 36 of you. I saw it in the spirit. 36 people. 36 people. Literal fire. Physical fire. 36 people. Inside and outside. And the word of the Lord. 36 people. Inside and outside. Oh, let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. For some of you, it's burning the chaff of habits. For some of you, it's setting your spirit on fire. Hallelujah. We have to do this really fast. Hallelujah. Eleven people will receive a supernatural leadership mandate. Eleven people. Eleven people. I'm seeing the number in my spirit. Hallelujah. For those who hear me, hear me. On your tummy and the whole of your head, you will literally feel that they are dropping something a very very hot substance now please don't just come out we are not just i'm just doing what the lord is showing me 11 people hallelujah we are going to shout jesus and these 11 people such a dramatic power of god will come on you 11 people let's shout jesus one two three Bring them out. 
Hear my spirit laughter. Hear me. Laughter in the spirit. It will break out in a supernatural way. I don't know why God is doing this. Laughter in the spirit. Laughter in the spirit. Lord, we release it. Now. Now. Hey. Now. Laughter in the spirit. Laughter in the spirit. Ay, 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 
untenable level. If I be a servant of God right now under this unction, this atmosphere of the Spirit of God, change, 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 outside, change, change. Receive the favor of the from Gentiles. Change for your family. Change. in your academics every student here now is the time to change your status lift your hands inside and outside oh it's not by power don't let any man fool you it's not by might for death works in us that life will work in you Kaposo toperiakata, ran teke teke tevaka, baso porukasa. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command you increase in your academics, break new grounds. I command, be the best, be the best. Jesus I command now a supernatural dimension of intelligence receive it in the name of Jesus right here I command the release of first class students receive it sickness represented in this place that we did not mention you came for miracle service come out you came for miracle service every sickness every infirmity represented right here in this holy and sanctified atmosphere right now be healed in the name of Jesus outside be healed in the name of Jesus cancer die in the name of Jesus my grave die in the name of Jesus fibroid go in the name of Jesus blind up.
Hallelujah. That's what God is doing in this place. Hallelujah. The last thing that I'll do is to prophesy all round increase. All round increase. Amen. Listen, I know that we trivialize and we casualize things because we just speak, receive and move forward. I don't do anything except the Lord shows me. Hallelujah. A miracle service is put to upgrade your life, my brother. It's meant to upgrade your life. Therefore, inside and outside, release your faith one last time. As I send this prophetic word into your destiny, and Isaac said of Jacob, he said, the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed. Therefore, right now, under this supernatural unction of the spirit, inside and outside, my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, there is an anointing that brings increase. Don't let any man fool you. You can try, you can sweat, you can calculate, but there is an anointing. He said, because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And in the name of Jesus, I command increase on every side. Amen. Increase on every side. Amen. Increase on every side. Amen. In your finances, increase. Amen. In your relationship, increase. Amen. In your academics, increase. Amen. In your spiritual life, increase. Amen. In your ministry, increase. In your business, increase. In your plans and goals, increase. In your groups and fellowships, increase. I release it upon your life. A signature that symbolizes the hand of God. Therefore, let there be a mark of greatness upon everyone under the sound of my voice. Amen. You are tonight from tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are marked for supernatural greatness. You are marked for supernatural greatness. I don't care what your family background is. Hear me. I don't care what it, the name of your village is. I don't care what has been spoken over your life. Every decree that is against the decree of the world over your life and destiny from tonight be free in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are free from your past in the name of Jesus. You are free from stagnation. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Make progress. Break new grounds. None of you is permitted to remain where you are. Go forward. Go forward. Every Red Sea standing in front of you. Everything that symbolizes a mountain of impossibility under this unction of the spirit. Right now, I command, be free, go forward. Every oppression over your family that will not let them 
enjoy everything Jesus died for tonight I command for your families step into a higher realm Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. every member of your family who does not have a job I don't care what the person's qualification is if God be King of Kings and Lord of Lords I release miracle jobs now for yourself and for your loved ones receive it in the name of Jesus and every of your family members that is due for promotion and has been kept back I don't care what the limitations are right now in the name of Jesus we promote them receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah I want to come against marital delay delay in relationships and marriage hear me inside and outside according to Isaiah 34 verse 16 it says seek out of the book of the Lord and read none of these things shall fail it says none shall want her mate for the mouth of the Lord has spoken right now I declare there are many of you that your loved ones at home ah they are advanced in age and there's no one to get married to them and they're giving all kinds of nonsense explanations for it came to pass that on that day Esther passed the king once when she passed the king once that she obtained favor let me tell you something no barrenness shall be found in this camp so hear me right now under the unction of the spirit supernatural marriages supernatural relationships receive it in the name of jesus hear me don't let the devil fool you and make you think this is not necessary i said receive it in the name of jesus I see a family of four and I see another family of six ladies none of you are married hear me if God be God an end comes to this oppression tonight in the name of Jesus until the spirit be poured out from on high and then the wilderness be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine And every other request that you came here with hear me inside and outside I don't care what your needs are many of us came with different kinds of requests right now I pray that you receive solution to every problem whatever challenge you came here with we end it here in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Amen. very quickly listen inside and outside everyone who can hear my voice you've not made Jesus Lord of your life please let me have some space here this is the greatest miracle all of these signs and wonders and miracles are for a reason the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son he said that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life he said come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and i i alone will give you rest there are so many of us seated here outside and some of us passing some listening from our homes 
you need Jesus Christ enough of struggling with sin enough of struggling with the flesh enough of being a victim of the oppressions of Satan and right now I'm going to invite you I like all of us to rise up on our feet as we honor this great salvation inside and outside for Jesus the Lord of your life I like you to run inside right now you want to make Jesus Lord of your life come on inside and outside we are waiting for you appreciate them as they come enough is enough appreciate them every one of them let them find their way Jesus is the way appreciate them as they come inside and outside inside and outside don't stay back he's calling you come on appreciate them we love you welcome home inside and outside harden not your heart Jesus is calling please ushers help the people outside as they join this loving family of victorious people how long will you struggle with the Holy Spirit Jesus is calling Jesus is calling appreciate them as they come come to Jesus leave your seat and run to Jesus Christ he's the only hope the only one every other plan will fail the Holy Spirit is still convicting more people don't stay back harden not your heart run to Jesus Christ we are still waiting for a few we are still waiting for a few young and old come on leave your seat I see a number of people outside who should be inside by the spirit of God I call you to come forward I call you to come forward by the spirit of God I appreciate them they are coming those of you outside I see the Lord showing me people by the spirit of God I call you I call you by the authority of the spirit I call you by the authority of the spirit Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above the earth's Lord Jesus is the way Hallelujah Now look at me Hallelujah I want to congratulate every one of you for coming here hallelujah look at me i hope you came here by revelation and understanding hallelujah that you need jesus christ i don't care what it is you have done are you listening to me no one condemns you there is love in this place are you listening to me for the son of god did not come into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him john 3 17 i pray for you right now hallelujah that the power of sin and satan over your life be broken now i'd like you to say after me dear lord jesus i like you to it's not a special number it's a very serious destiny dedication are you listening to me say after me dear lord jesus i believe in you i believe you came to the earth you suffered for my sin you died for me. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.